Good morning, Island. It's Thursday, April 19th, and you know what that means? We're talking about the feminist art movement. I've got my dungarees on. I haven't shaved for weeks, and I hate men because, as Beyonce says, girls run this world. Okay, just kidding. I didn't mean any of that. No. <laughs> But I do want to talk about the feminist art movement and how Louise Nevelson contributed to the movement. Now I know what you may be thinking about feminist art. <gasps> Ugh, not the painting of a vagina. What do you mean, dear? It's an obvious symbol of sexuality. But one cannot even begin to discuss symbolism when presented with such a vulgar display of the female flesh. I suppose the coloring is alright, if not a bit brash. I think it's not abstract at all. It's kitsch. I don't know what you mean. The use of flowers is merely the artist's interpretation and subsequent observation of nature. The fact that I'm implying these rather masculine dull ideas of sexuality is an egotistical assumption that her work only caters to your beliefs. <gasps> Look at the brush strokes! Whatever you say, dear, now give me some coffee. But the feminist art movement wasn't just about portraying female reproductive organs in a piece of work or even talking about hating men. It was so much more than that, Eileen. Feminist art started because women wanted to be able to validly express their experiences and the hardships that they faced through art. They also wanted their work to be recognized by their peers and possibly featured in museums and not just considered a hobby kids craft. Louise Nevelson's enigmatic personality was one of the main reasons she was able to shake the male stigmas in the art world. She constantly challenged what it meant to be feminine, whether it was through her work or if it was how she was expressing herself while she was dressing. She dressed distinctly feminine. She constantly wore long dresses and false eyelashes and fur coats to set herself apart from her male counterparts. Another way she defined herself as distinctly feminine was that although she primarily worked in wood as her medium, she refused to partake in things like carpentry and often used wood that she had found and reappropriated in her works instead of creating them. She published her hold and influence by earning some of the most prestigious positions in the United States art community. She was president of the National Artists' Equity and the vice president of the Federation of Modern American Painters and Sculptors. She was also an active member of the National Association of Women Artists as well as the Sculptors Guild of America. Ha! Take that, Hillary Clinton. After being featured in the 16 Americans exhibition, her career blew up. Louise Nevelson was being hired extensively for commissions. Some of her works during this time included works like the Sky Tree in front of the Embarcadero Center in San Francisco, as well as the Chapel of the Good Shepherd for St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Manhattan. So, to answer your question, Eileen, Louise Nevelson was never concerned or deterred by the fact that the contemporary art world might not have a place for her as a woman. And while she wasn't as heavily debated as some of her male contemporaries, she was still discussed in Lyndon Nochlin's famous 1971 essay, Why Have There Been No Great Women Artists? And she was cited as a major influence for the incoming generation of female artists who were attempting to establish the identity of femininity. Louise was inspired by male artists. But that doesn't mean she didn't inspire female artists while also inspiring male artists. Some of the most famous people she inspired include that of William de Kooning and Marc de Severo. I don't think controversy makes the artist Eileen. I don't think gender makes the artist. I think the artist makes the artist, as well as the attitude they put into their works and the mentality they express through them. Eileen, I'll see you on Monday.